Oh, shit. Are you okay? <laughs> Bloopers? Bloopers. <laughs> hey, get in here. Dallas is about to start. Welcome to the Ewing Barbecue, where tonight we're going to family court. My name is Mary, and Sarah is not joining us tonight, and we would like to wish her the best because her grandmother has passed. So, oh, condolences, yes, Sarah. Yes. Yeah. We love yes. you. Uh, I am at the site of the former Il Sorrento restaurant, and it's not here anymore. This is Josh. Uh, what? Oh, I'm Melanie. What? What does that even We'll get mean? to it. We'll get to it. Okay. <laughs> I lost it. I'm sorry. Did any of us ever have it? <laughs> A quick shout out to our Patreon members. Brendan Phillick, Captain America, Marie Johnson, Michael Young, Jason Carter, Jennifer Indelicato, Laura Bernheim, Brad Mulholland, Anita Wren, and Kristen Carlano. As always, thanks, guys. Uh, yes. I just noticed I did it again this weekend. Not even kidding. I forgot what? my own name. What? I managed to forget my own name one night, and I did it again as I was doing the intro because I responded to Josh, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm Melanie. I need to stop forgetting my name. It's a problem. Yeah, have, have, you be been drink, have you been drinking uh, in preparation for the show a little bit too I much? I haven't. I have not. Oh, maybe you <laughs> should start. <laughs> I'm sober. That's the problem. So let's see. Next week is the event in Salem with Omri Katz. Uh, Friday at the Bit Bar with him, Jason Marsden, Vanessa Shaw, and Thora Birch. And then that Saturday, the 21st, they will be on the Salem Common doing photos, autographs, and just stuff like that. And Sunday, we're actually riding around. I'm driving, uh, and we're going to all the locations where they were filming back 30 years ago. Cool. And they, and they haven't changed. We have uh, Patty McCormick, Barbara Carrera, and Deborah Renard at the Chiller the last weekend of the month. That would be the 27th, 28th, 29th. And Barbara Eden will be at Rhode Island Comic Con Saturday and Sunday, November 4th and 5th. Not Friday, which is the date I have ticket to. Because that's I had to squeeze it around work so I could be able to go and not go and yeah, like I love her. I'm so glad I got to see her she, in January she, in Atlanta. Totally. She great? Yeah. And, and she she autographed my copy of her autobiography. Book. Oh, that yeah. is a great book. I love that book. I know. And it's like I'm gonna something it's like an heirloom now, man. I'm never getting rid of it. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I don't know who's going to 90s con in hartford in march but there are absolutely no rooms available at the two hotels nearest there there are not even comic-con discounts for those hotels so yeah uh keep your eyes open i don't know if any of our anyone from dallas patrick duffy or check airbnbs that's what i stayed at last year in an airbnb and yeah i don't know if Patrick Duffy might show up with the step-by-step people or Omri Katz again with Hocus Pocus, but we will keep our eyes on that. I did register to volunteer for the whole weekend this time. We need to find an 80s kind is what we need. Oh, yes. Because, like, literally, like, we could go, like, get a booth or something if there was an 80s kind. Oh, absolutely. (gasps) That would be so cool. Speaking of 80s, uh, the... Princess Cruise with oh, yeah. uh, Cherie Wilson, Christopher Atkins. It's weird seeing them together because they were never on screen together at the yeah. during the show. Yeah. Um, Charlene Tilton and Linda Gray. They had a Q and A. Linda did one, and then the other three did one separately. And Alan Catton has posted he was a trooper and he videotaped the entire thing and they oh, that's are cool. Posted. I didn't see that. And they actually were mingling among the people. They weren't just these separate little things. That's cool. Cherie, Cherie was on the dance floor every night with her significant that's other. I don't, I don't know if they're married or not, but, uh, but yeah, they were on the dance floor every night and people just got to go up chat and they were just like other people on the cruise. So yeah, that's awesome. So that, hmm. And it's funny that Linda did hers separately because 
when Cherie, Charlene, and uh, Christopher were up on stage, apparently Linda was in the back in the audience. Because oh. <laughs> they, they referenced her a few times, and you could hear her in the background. So, I don't know. Interesting. And today is, it's 1010. Uh, Karen Copens, uh, we brought this up last week, and J. Eddie Peck are both uh, 63 years old. And the 13th was the anniversary, is the anniversary of Dennis Patrick, uh, Von Leland's death in 2002. Jim McMullen, who played Andrew Dowlings, would have a birthday on the 13th, born in 1936. And Digger Barnes, number two, Keenan Wynn, the Winter Warlock, uh, died October 14th, 1986. And Barry Corbin will have his 83rd birthday on the 16th. That's all we have today. Let's awesome. put that away. So tonight we're talking about season six, episode 15, episode 118 of the series. The Reckoning. I can't believe you're still intent on tarnishing Daddy's memory. Don't you say that to me. Well, I don't know how else I can get through to you. I wouldn't underestimate your mama right now. She's angry. She's determined. We can't lose this, Harv. There's too much at stake. Miss Ellie made up her mind herself, and if you don't know that, you don't know your own mother. I know my own mother, and I know you too, sweetheart. Ever since you moved into this family, you've been in trouble. Now stay out of it. This is not your fight. Are you saying... When your husband wrote the codicil, he was mentally incompetent. It is a reckoning if ever there was one. It was written by Will Lauren and directed by Bill Duke, who's a new director to the series. And yeah, we, we noticed that in one scene. Uh. <laughs> uh, I looked him up because I don't, something just struck me like, I feel like there's something with the name. And I was right. Uh, Bill Duke is uh, a director, but also an actor. He's been in a lot of things. He was in an episode of SVU. Oh, for, Dallas fans, <laughs> for Dallas fans, you would probably recognize him most as Seth Foster in Dallas, the early years. Oh. Who's Bill Duke, you said? Yeah. He's the one black character in Dallas, the early years, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so, Yeah. He's also been in a lot of other things that I've seen. So, like, I was like, I know. I yeah. I'm trying to think of when this could have been. I mean, I, I'm sure I can find the episode, but he looks familiar, but he just, his pictures are older. And this episode aired January 14th, 1983. And the number one song was, in the U.S. was Down Under by Men at Work. And in the UK, it was You Can't Hurry Love by Phil Collins. And the number one film in the US is still Tootsie. I couldn't find anything really exciting happening. Uh, born on this day was Vincent Jackson, a uh, sports ball player with the NFL. Um, he plays sports with the ball. San Diego Chargers. And uh, yeah. I, I like that. Uh... Every time I hear Down Under, I think of my love for Vegemite. Has anyone else had Vegemite? I've never had Vegemite. I'm assuming it's a really close to Marmite. I love Marmite. Yes. A lot of people don't like it because they don't know how to properly use it. Right. And it's so good. Like, you just need toast with, like, a shit ton of butter and just a, a, a little spread of it. It's, a little I, spread. It's so good. It's. It, I consider it, like... Soy sauce paste, in a way. Yeah, kind of, it's salty. It's, it's salty. I love and to make um, avocado toast with it. I don't I do avocados, it, but... Um, oh, I love avocados. Uh, I but, love uh, avocado toast. You and I killed some of that, I remember. Yeah. Didn't we, at brunch in New York? When mm. I make it myself, I put a little bit of uh, Marmite, avocado, the mm. everything bagel, uh, everything bagel seasoning, seasoning. Uh, mm -hmm. and then some capers. And oh, you call it out. I do just like salt and pepper and like lemon juice and the avocado, but then I um, actually like pan fry kind of some tomatoes and once in a, and throw those on. Oh, and then also one, an egg. I, I like yeah, egg. and an egg. How do you and cook the egg? With the runny yolk or the runny yolk? Uh, I have it when it's just a little, like just a little runny. Over like, easy, just over enough easy. To, yeah. yeah. So that like I, it's edible and you, it's not like getting everywhere. 
over easy to over medium, if that makes any sense. Yeah. yeah. I don't like runny. I don't like yolks. Mm-hmm. I like I like scrambled eggs and omelets. That's the way I would probably slap that onto some toast. I like I, yolks if they're not hard boiled. I oh I, I only eat like the egg yolks. whites on hard boiled. Yeah, I didn't like like the whole runny egg thing until. Have yeah. you ever had a Korean barbecue bowl like bulgogi or anything? Mm-hmm. Oh my god, get one of those if you can with the egg on it. Game changer. Well, also like the soft boiled egg and like ramen and stuff like that is. So I like mm-hmm. I like taking the egg. Uh, you- open it up you have to hit it once very quickly and open it otherwise if you sit there tapping it that's when you get the mm-hmm. shells that break into it but you stir it up if and you then roll you roll it on it. the countertop it's an easier way to peel it by the way oh oh when it's hard-boiled you're saying mm-hmm. yeah oh uh, yeah I'm, I'm talking about before you hard boil if you're gonna like scramble it or something just oh. hit it once hit it once yes. and then one time. not not exactly. tapping because yeah. that's the that's where the shells come from but uh, stir it up, and then you pour it into – if you're making like an egg drop soup, it's good that way too. Hmm. But yet yeah, the key to my avocado toast, the big one, if you want to put cheese on it, you can. The balsamic glaze at the end. Just that little thing of Bertoli that you just drizzle. There you go. That's Yum. Good. Tonight on the You and Bar- Barbecue, <laughs> yeah, all cook- like cooking, cooking Podcast. Hey, you know uh, what? Maybe we should each make avocado toast this weekend and post it on Insta- our Instagram so we can show our listeners how we do it. Go. I, that would be I, this goes along. I finally watched no. The Bear on Hulu. I don't know if you guys have watched that, but it's all about yeah. a chef. And so I've been watching like fancy food making all week. So. Oh, wow. You're not talking about like co- cocaine bear. No, 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 no. no. It's no. called the bear. It's about this guy who um, he's he's like a really big chef at like a really like the best restaurant in the world. And his brother was also like a cook and his brother dies and leaves him the family restaurant in Chicago, which is oh. kind of like a divey place. Oh, and it's really good. There's two seasons. Oh, recommend. Hmm. I was watching some show on uh, was it Netflix, like uh, some cooking show. They go around the different places, and one of them was uh, based on uh, Christine Tosi's place called The Milk Bar. Have you heard of that? Mm-mm. Oh, yeah. Look up The Milk Bar when you have a chance. It's very – they have like uh, cereal, milk, ice cream, and just all these weird flavors of hmm. stuff. Yeah. So hmm. are we uh, on to – Okay. Uh, and on Dallas, Josh. And on Dallas, this episode was number four in the weekly ratings. Uh, yeah, director Bill Duke was a character actor, as you had mentioned, who appeared in movies Car Wash, American Gigolo, and Bird on a Wire, among other things that you had mentioned. John Beck's first scene with Larry Hagman was in this episode, and he calls Larry Hagman... The greatest guy in the world. I had worked with him. This is a little interesting tidbit. He said, I had worked with him when I first came into the business and got to say one line on I Dream of Genie in the mid-1960s. Porn stash on I Dream of Genie. Dang. I worked with him again when he played the James Garner role in the pilot for the TV version of the movie The Skin Game. Larry was a lot of fun. Going back to Bill Duke for a second. Um did we – I'm sorry. I, I didn't catch this. Did, did you guys mention that he kind of fell into it because he accidentally got chosen for to direct Knott's Landing, and then that led to Dallas, and then that led to Falcon Crest? No. I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't oh, read he, any of that online. Oh, okay. Yeah. He, he, brought, he, yeah. he bounced around the Lorimar primetime soap bubble? Apparently, yeah. He Whoa. was it's like there was some clerical mix up. It wasn't supposed to be him, but they went with it. <laughs> oh, it's funny. According that to might, the Wikipedia, which was kinda cited. <laughs> but that might that might explain the two randos walking by behind Miss Ellie and Rebecca in the episode. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I real I seriously did a double take when I saw those two. They were just like Randomly walking. I think there just supposed to be ranch hands yeah. walking around. Yeah. But it, it was completely like random because 
when was the last time you see random ranch hands walking by the pool at the ranch? It's like not, we don't usually see them often, so close to the times. house, but yeah, yeah. We, we see them like that guy that was like waiting for Ellie at uh, Ray's that time, just hanging out. Yeah, that was because he was the driver uh, standing right. in the background. But but I guess it's just showing that it's a working ranch. Well, okay. And they were on the set in L.A., as somebody pointed out. They were out. on the set, so yeah, it's totally legit. Uh, the breeze on the south stage. South. Okay, so we open on South Fork. Night. Start drinking, because all the lights are on again. All the lights are on, yes. <laughs> Damn it, Sue Ellen, I hate your hair. I just, I'm sorry. I know. Love Linda Gray. So I, bad. I don't like the hair. I can't stand it. Ugh, no. When she grows her hair out, she can do great things with it. When she cuts it short, she's selling herself short. I just can't stand it, Josh. It's a, <laughs> it's a mullet and it's a very bad one. I mean, I'm sure it was the thing back then, but I mean. Right. But those that was on 80s rock stars like Rick Springfield, that sort of thing. And John Mellencamp. But, but that, those were men. But I, Lisa she, Hartman had one for a while. She wore it well on Knott's Landing. Her Because her, they, they knew what to do with it. But Linda did not. She doesn't lend herself well to a mullet. I liked Linda's short cropped hair. Like not the short short, but like kind of. I don't know how to describe it. Kind of mid nineties ish. Oh yeah. I don't know if they call it a bob or whatever. I mean, I, she could pull that off. She she looks good as a blonde. Hell, I never thought I'd look good as Were a blonde. Were you talking surprise. about it during one of the, during one of the movies around that time? Uh, yeah. Oh, when she first went what? blonde as Hillary Michaels, and her hair was about that long. Fire. Right. And then she showed up on War of the Ewings with the lighter. Yes, it was a little bit. It wasn't as short as Jr. Returns, but it was. And Ray in War of the Ewings had that really dark hair because he had just done another role and had to dye the hair. So that's why he had that weird hair oh. color. Oh he my had. God, I didn't even think about I that. I forgot about that. I know. <laughs> and let, the same thing I say about uh, facial hair, I can apply to mullets. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's awful. Mm -hmm. I, I'm like, I look at her and I'm like, just try to, like, it's all I can see. I keep trying to picture like Sue Ellen season five hair, like the, 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 the hair that was down to here, like when I'm watching it now, I'm like, yeah. oh, Linda, why'd you do that to your pretty hair? We need like mm -hmm. late eighties when it's all like big. I loved and that. Then, because then they I had realized. a barber shop in the hospital. That's why when she was there and she. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think what she did was an act of rebellion directly related to her divorce. Oh, is that about oh. this time? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yes, because that's that's what happens. Big breakups a lot of times. Chop, chop, chop. And then the studio was like, what the fuck? Right. And they just went with it. <laughs> Priscilla actually did something and she said she had to wear a wig of sorts. They tried to make Linda wear a wig, I thought. Did she wear a wig? Because I know that she her hair is all of a sudden cut while she's in jail. They did have her wig for a, a bit, uh, and I think they learned from the mistake that was made with Linda just getting her hair cut when the next scene was supposed to be right after. Uh, right. So they said, no more of that. No more of that. Yeah, because it's obviously not done. They don't shoot those in the same day. They have to, like you know, go back and make sure right. the makeup's the same, the clothes are the same, everything is the same. Continuity experts. And I tell you what drove the continuity at what show they really had to do that for was 24 because the whole season of 10 months filming took place over the course of one day. Oh, yeah, I never watched so, that show. So they had to go back and they had to get haircuts right, like constantly to keep the yeah. hair the same and same sense. clothes and everything like that. Oof, what a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> Ellie's playing the piano. Yeah. Do we know nice. what tune she was playing? Sometimes I like it when they have the character playing a piano and they're playing the show's theme song, but very slowly or something. Well, yeah, she was doing that a, a few, like last season, I think. Hmm. Maybe. Anyhow. Ellie tells them that she's seen a lawyer and she's going to, uh, she's going forward with trying to break the will. 
And JR says that she's tarnishing his daddy's memory and she snaps at him. Yeah. Oh. She's like, don't you talk to me that way. This is and my Bobby app. say something about her being hasty. And yeah. she's like, I don't think it's hasty at all. And I'm like, ooh, hasty. Hasty is, it's like nasty, but with an H. That's, right. that's how Miss Ellie is right now. She's like, mm-mm, mm-mm. I've made up my mind. And uh, Sue Ellen says it's not fair. And uh, Ellie says it's not about fairness. It's about survival. Survival. Which is yes. true. And then and JR's like, rah, 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 Pam's fault. All your fault. Every single fucking thing in the last three years is your fault. And she's like, uh, excuse st- you? Stay the hell out of it, Pam. And he takes off. And Sue Ellen takes off after him. She looks at Bobby. Bobby's standing there like, what the fuck? And the she first goes, what the fuck of the Pam's episode. like, you didn't you defend did- me at all. Like, wow. Thanks for that. Slow clap. And she's like, well, he's not wrong, you know. Right. <laughs> and she's kind of like, ah, ah, and, you know, huffs off. And this was my question. Did they all walk into dinner? Did they? Because weren't they walking towards the kitchen? Because the next scene, you're like, wait, did they even go to dinner? But because I would expect food to fly after that if they went into the dining room, like, with how no, pissed off I, everyone was. I, I think Jaren right. and Sue Ellen went upstairs because the next scene, they're upstairs. Right, they go upstairs. So I think it was later at night, maybe. I thought the bedroom scene was supposed to be later at night. Mm-hmm. Like, had they actually gone and sat through dinner together? I, I, I don't think that. Yeah. I think it's one, if there, if it would, the, this was pre-dinner drinks and they're going to go into dinner, I think it's going to be one of those things where they all leave and go out to dinner. Like, they usually do whenever there's a big fight. <laughs> <laughs> right, because gotcha. if there was, if they were at dinner, then I would have wanted to see that scene at dinner. Yeah, that would have been awkward. I mean, there's another awkward dinner scene later in this episode, but mm-hmm. pass the mother bleeping potatoes. No, <laughs> <laughs> you want potatoes, and then the, then then the, that's when they would let Larry and Patrick start flicking the uh, potatoes at the. T- <laughs> <laughs> And then we catch up to Jr. and Suellen later uh, in their bedroom, where Suellen's like trying to explain Pam's actions to Jr. She's like, she's not doing it to be a jerk. Like she's she's really like, she's trying to do what she thinks is right. Mm-hmm. Right. And she's trying to walk that fine line between. Supporting her husband, preserving her friendship with Pam, because they said they were not going to let that affect them. Right. And yeah. I appreciate Sue Ellen really trying to stick to that, honestly. Mm-hmm. Good, good luck with that. Right. But then JR kind of uses it against her because he's like, okay, well, you know, I think she's wrong because of this. And she's like, well, I agree with you, but she doesn't think about it that way. Well, Pam, uh, Sue Ellen, per- perhaps you could get Pam away from South Fork and use that friendship to kind of dial her back in and redirect her energies. Uh, Wasn't to she like, her husband. you know, like, well, I tried, you know, I already tried that. Right. And that's when he said, try to do it away. Right. Away from here. Like, he's like, you can do it. You can do it. And she's like, uh, I I'll know. give it another try, but uh. I'll give it the old college try. Yeah. And then we cut to uh, Rebecca and Ellie bonding over Christopher. And two random dudes walking by in the background, which we two just Two random discussed. ranch hands walking behind. Yeah, I guess. Working ranch. Which, which is weird seeing. I don't know what ranch hands would be doing near the swimming pool in the main house, unless you're. I mean, maybe mi- doing Billy stuff. Um, Mickey was doing that or maybe Mickey doesn't want to do that anymore because he's fighting with Lucy too much <laughs> maybe maybe. Mm. and I, can I just say in this scene these two especially Barbara Belgetti's like in real life grandmas yeah totally absolutely totally. IRL grandmas yeah 100% there's just some things you cannot act it just comes out naturally <laughs> yeah I mean because Barbara was like who's a good boy <laughs> <laughs> and the baby's just like <laughs> it's me, ugly Christopher. No. <laughs> he okay. I gotta say, I I don't know. Maybe it was just his the, his hair was shorter before, but he was adorable and pinch cheekable. 
in this I, I cheek think he's bowl. cute. I think Christopher, yeah, I think episode. Eric Farlow is a cute baby. And I disagree with a, a people who think he was ugly. I think he's cute. Right. I think the poor thing had to grow into his hair a little bit. Well, I mean, yeah. I had to <laughs> do the same hair. thing as a kid because yeah. I had big curly hair too. So, yeah. And, uh, he had but that. But he was an then, adorable kid, like when he was talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then Tyler Banks had his bowl cut. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> bowl cuts were pretty popular at this point. Yeah. Right into the 90s. And then um, Justin Bieber. Oh, then we won't go there. Uh, so they're bonding over Christopher, and they're also bonding over Ellie's decision to challenge the will. Rebecca is just like, I think you're doing the right thing. I just want you to know. And we hope it works out for them because it would be nice to not have all this fighting going on. Because if they can right. get the will, then, then Ellie yep. can. Yep, they can all move nothing. on. Right. Yep. And just be like grandmas to baby Christopher. <laughs> And they do mention that the uh, it is putting a little strain on Bobby and Pam at the at this time. And right. Rebecca says that she has gotten Cliff to hold back for now to wait to see how the thing plays out. Right. And and Rebecca's not worried about Bobby and Pam. She's like, they'll get through it. It's not a big deal. And you know, it'll be fine. And we cut to Harv, and he's telling. Uh, du Bois that uh, Brooks Oliver only would have taken this case if he thought he could win it because he's that kind of lawyer. Mm-hmm. And Harv's a little worried. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, there's. I had a question here about this 14 or 15 years ago on this will. Yeah. Um, I was like, wait a minute, thinking back to season one. JR saw the will. I know. I kept thinking about that this whole episode. Yeah, the will was also not that thick. So when the hell did he rewrite it in between? 15 years ago? I think that they uh, forgot. Forgot about that, yeah. Well, details that they wouldn't expect us to remember 45 right. years later. They just, They're just they like, not that many people were watching it. Season one, season two, uh, you know, it's not... You know, they're not going to rewatch it later. There's not going to be a way to do that. It's fine. Well, obviously he did though, because wasn't it, didn't this all come about with like Jock, um, the red file, the something like, no, the, yeah. When he had his heart attack. Oh yeah. I mean, they, they dealt with all, cause it was the red file. It was the whole thing. And it was Jeb, Jock's Jeb and heart- Willie Joe. And yeah. Yeah. Mark. Yeah. And, wasn't it that J.R. read that Jock had left everything to him, like the company, the entirety of it? Wasn't that right in that it, will? Because it now was, it's split and there's a contest. It, what it, if that was like a planted will? We're just going to make shit up now because they messed up. Oh, my God. That would be such a fucking Dallas thing to do. It would. Jock would just totally. mess up people. Yeah. Totally plausible. Totally. There's plausible. there's a lot of stuff from the first like I'd say one seasons 1 to 3 um the original uh seasons 1 and 2 and the the mini series that they reuse later on and they're like this never happened originally. We're just gonna Oh god, they do that on TV shows all the time. <laughs> I mean, because there's the whole episode well Bring it back to Jenna. Um, with Charlie? Where the whole thing with Charlie's, uh, who her father is. Because that whole thing is solved in one episode in 1978. And then it's like drawn out for like half a season. Mm-hmm. Right. Because even in when Jenna's face suddenly morphed into Francine Tacker. Right. She was had put Charlie on a plane to Italy to be with Naldo. Right, her father. Yes. Yes. Which is where and she ran. And then later, the Charlie's airport. never met him. She doesn't even know who he is. So mm-hmm. I don't. <laughs> you know, uh, whatever. It is what it is. But I know because Jr. was concerned with being able to drill on the South Fork section, section 40. forty. The South Fork. With Jeb and Willie Joe and that whole deal he was yeah. concocting, so. Oh, Section Forty, yes. 40. 
Which, which turned into Section 18 by 2012, right? 2011. Is that that they changed the name of it? Oh, yeah. I think they, like somebody what? didn't do her homework. Drives me insane. They, they, Just they, the minimal amount of work. They were they were merging sections. That's what. And so there were less of them. No, I don't know. I'm just making. Crap Let me tell up you now. this: the uh, the current showrunner of Law and Order SVU, when he found out he had gotten the job, binged the entire series and took notes. Yeah, because that's your job. Mm-hmm. That's your freaking job. By then, it was 23 seasons, and he had three months to do it in, <laughs> if that. Oh. <laughs> Less than. So anyway, uh, where were we? The codicil. Yeah, yeah. So there's one from 15 years ago that he wrote. So he wrote it in April of 68, and that will go into effect if this one is thrown out. And in this scene, it's weird because Harv said... Uh... I think it was written 14 years ago, but then later he said 15 years ago in the next scene when he actually had the I think will. he said 14 or 15 years ago, mm-hmm. and then I he remember said both. 15, yeah. and then he said in April of that year. So that's what okay. I'm counting back, April of okay. 78. I, I heard the 14 first, so my, so my brain honed in on the 14, and then when it came later, it said uh, 15, so I'm going, oh, okay, so whatever. But it's the late 60s. Late sixties, Bobby is still in high school. You know, that whole thing. JR and Sue Ellen are engaged. Yeah. Hmm. Because they met in what, sixty seven, I mm-hmm. believe. Yes. At the pageant. So I mean I'm of course Lucy already existed, but right. I think Jock was in the process of like rewriting the will because he knew grandchildren were probably gonna be coming. Right. Eventually. Yeah. More mm-hmm. grandchildren, anyway, and he was expe- straight up expecting grand- a grandson. There's no other way around it. That's why you rewrite write your will when your eldest son is about to get married. Right. And by the time he uh, had the thing written and gone off to South America, he had to incorporate those shares of Cyberbyte for JR Returns. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. the things we make up. Um, and then we cut to Sue Ellen and Pam are out to lunch at Mario Messina's Il Sorrento Cucina Italiana. I think I at eighty six sixteen Turtle Creek Boulevard, mm-hmm. and Mario Messina uh, died at ninety seven years old on no. uh, March tenth of two thousand fourteen. He was born nineteen sixteen. That's a long life. And I'm going to post his obituary to our page, just so people can see. And some facts about that restaurant is uh, it opened in 1950, and it was the first restaurant in the Dallas area to offer outdoor dining. There were 55 indoor seats and 44 on the patio. Uh, Messina's elegant restaurant served house-made pasta, an imported espresso machine brewed after-dinner coffee, the event menu included veal cutlets, Caesar salads, and something with a Z that's Italian that I can't pronounce. Um, and romantic dinner was accompanied by fine wine, strolling musicians, and candlelight. And so this is totally a place, one, where all the rich people of Dallas would go. And, mm-hmm. of course, porn stash would eat there for lunch every day. I wonder if the... Um the waiters came around and go, you like me to crack at the pepper for you? You want to crack at the pepper? You like at the pepper? <laughs> oh, yes. And they come oh, out God. with a little pepper grinder. You like at the pepper? Oh, my God. That's enough. I, sh- I should note, though, uh, that uh, Harv said that Ellie was going to have to testify that Jock was not of sound mind, and Bobby said that she'll never do that, and he said, don't underestimate your mother. She's angry, he said. Mm-hmm. Like she, she's, she'll do what she's got to do. And yeah. And JR says, you got to win at all. St- Everything's at stake here. <laughs> you got to win this fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wah, 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 how many wah, times wah, wah. Does J- is JR going to play a fuck around and find out in his life? Yeah. Where and they always the underestimate who's... Ellie. Yeah. Do not underestimate Ellie. Do not underestimate Bobby. Yeah. Right. Your mother took a horsewhip to your father. Do you want to mess with that? 
Like, he never realizes, he always thinks he is the way he is because of Jock. But it's like, dude, you're both your parents' kids. Kid, you know? That's for sure. She's just as stubborn. Oh, yeah. And meanwhile, Gary's out surfing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Gary's going to Gary. Um, so, Sue Ellen is trying to convince Pam, again, to, like, back off of the situation. Um, d- not doing a very good job of it, because Pam's just like, nope. Uh, Ellie's right, and I'm standing behind her. And she's talking about, like, supporting her husband and stuff, and I'm like, okay, but you... Sue Ellen, you you can't support them blindly like that. Yeah. Yeah, It's just, you know... Pam doesn't care about the fight. She wants wants her family intact. Yeah. And she's she's saying... She's... Spoiler... Spoiler alert again. (laughs) Foreshadowing again. She says somebody is going to get hurt really really hurt this is the second time in the last two episodes that people have said somebody's gonna get hurt and then in strides porn stash in strides porn stash and uh <laughs> he just like walks in and just locks eyes with pam and like hey, doesn't baby. move them away the entire time hey baby you wanna you wanna look for crumbs in my porn stash <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so Pam's like, oh, hey, Mark, Mark Grayson, hey, what's up? And uh, and then she's then he says something like, oh, you came to my restaurant, and she's like, oh, you own this, and he's like, no, 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 I just eat lunch here every single day. Mario Messina and I are good buddies. Well, right. And <clears throat> so then she thanks him for the loan of uh, Brooks Oliver. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, anything, anything I can do for you, I'm here. <laughs> While, like, St- staring right in her face. And meanwhile, and Sue Ellen is... Uh... <laughs> Sue Ellen is obviously picking up what's going on because she's not an idiot. And um, she's picking up what he's throwing down. <laughs> yes. And she's kind of like, so, and Pam is as well. And Pam is just kind of like uh, 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 stammering because she doesn't know what to say. And Swell and just like side eyeing both of them, like, what the fuck is happening? Mm-hmm. And then as he walks away, his gaze lingers. He's walking away. <laughs> so campy. Oh my god, he's he he's in this 100. percent They're like, so you have to be obsessed with her, and he's like. Gotcha. And Good job, my, Bill Duke. Good job. And my porn stash. Meanwhile, Donna is trying to talk sense into the commission, but oh, they're all my like, gosh. I really, I sat there, I actually wrote this down. I said, okay, are we watching Dallas or are we watching White House staff circa 2017? <laughs> oh, I mean, Right. I just uh, you know, the four of them are like, hello. Um, you know, it, well, Donna's like the voice of reason going, there's a fucking problem here. And they're all like, dar, 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 dar. no, they're, you know, what's that sound you make, Josh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's what they do. And she's like, you're not paying attention. I know this guy. I am married into his family. He is a piece of shit. Like, this is what is going to happen. He's not for the people. This isn't going to last. And when they the will gets it. overturned, his mother's going to sell the company, and that'll be the end of low gas prices. They don't care because he made them rich. Right. I mean, they don't care because they're, like, actively being paid off by JR to not care. Mm-hmm. So they're like, oh, it'll be fine. And they, like, like they said before, they're not voted for. They're appointed. So why do they care? It's not political for them. Right. Well, going against going against low gas prices is like going against motherhood. <laughs> I'm <laughs> against motherhood. So, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. This w- when you do these little political scenes like this, it remind it's. I always get this thing in the back of my head where, oh, we're testing the waters for a political spinoff of Dallas, like, and then hmm. when you had Mitch. In his hospital scenes, it was like, "Oh, we're we're testing Dallas for a medical spinoff of Dallas because we're going to ride the success of the show into every possible genre." Hmm. I mean, I wonder if 
they were. Um, you mean like random backdoor pilots? Yes. Interesting. Bobby no, Ewing, no. private feasible. eye. Bobby Ewing's it is feasible. psychotherapist. Yeah. It Happens seems before. like they would have done that with Mitch and Lucy because they were so popular, but right. they did not. Like all those Jefferson, uh, no, all in the family spinoffs and yeah. the happy days ones where you Over got Shirley. Mork and Mindy checking in, uh, uh, the Blansky sis- sisters with uh, something like the Blansky something or other. But um, they could have been testing the waters for possible I other. That, I, I would be interesting. I would love to, if someone knows any, like. Anything more about that, if that was a thing, even? Because, I mean, they did Knott's Landing, obviously. Um, to great success, too. If the iron burned hot once, it might burn hot again. So right. let's right. – uh, well, they said um, – George Hicks, is no, he's not going to do that. And he just got up and walked out. And yeah. that was the end right. of that. Okay. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I'm going to love him. You guys are so smart. I'm going to love him and hug him and call him George. Uh, uh. And Donna just can't even. <laughs> and it's also reeks of the male chauvinism, too, doesn't it? I mean, mm-hmm. yes. She's the only woman well. there, and they're just talking down to her. Right. And she's yeah. the only one actually talking any sense. Right. Ugh. Then we cut to the Cattleman's Club, where the cartel is trying to figure out what to do about the whole Wellington field thing. Well, I well, I'm not gonna be uncapping those wells. That's for sure. Jordan's <laughs> very against uncapping those wells, and they're like, "Well, we're gonna have to pay him." So, and he's like, well, "I'm still not gonna do it." Well, imagine that. Either way, Cliff Barnes says right. we end up helping Bobby Ewing. They're damned if they do, and damned if they don't. You might say. And it's funny because they're they're qualming about twenty twenty to thirty million dollars. And I'm like, well, yeah, that is a lot of money. But in the grand scheme of things nowadays, is that really a lot of money? I mean, when we compare it to like the 92 million, it would be in then money, you know, hmm. inflation. It was a lot more. So now but if Harv they all does... go in together, wait oh. a minute, would, would that have been, if they all go in together, if the cartel, did they, did they say this? Is it 25 to 30 coming from each of them? Or together? No, I think it's well, all together. So they just well, had to come up with it. Five times the market about? value for the share. Right. That's it. So, like, how many? There's, like, five of them. So they each have to come up with, like, six what are they, million. Uh, are there five or four? Is change to them? I mean, like, it seems like it. Like, But I don't know. Hmm. I mean, Cl- Cl- Cliff I think that's no why tr- Jordan wants to do it. Cliff had no trouble embezzling that money from his, from his mother's company. <laughs> that's uh, true. He learned his lesson, though. He learned his lesson. Mm-hmm. Yes. Many pills later. Yeah. Aww. In Harv's office, and he shows them the last will, which was dated April of 68. Very thick will. Mm-hmm. The big boy. That will thick. is ridiculously thick. With three C's. Mm-hmm. It's like rivaling the thickness of the War and Peace novel mm-hmm. that Charlie Brown had to read on New Year's. Um, and uh, that will says that 100% of Ewing oil goes to Ellie and Gary and Ray get nothing oh so 100% goes to Ellie now because that will that JR read a few seasons ago everything went to him so I think a will was planted (laughs) like you said I was going to say that JR Jock, punked himself. <laughs> Jock was pumping, punking him, you know? That makes sense. I mean, Jock would do, I mean, because he knows JR, so he would probably be like, yeah, let's just put the. Yeah. And see, when my will is right, it would be like, <laughs> see, see, we came up with a whole ass conspiracy theory to explain away the lack of continuity. But well, we fits. have to do something, right? Because <laughs> the lack of, because if it's the lack of continuity, it drives me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. You guys have one job anyway um <laughs> and, so anyway they need to win is what they're saying because um because even like because bobby is bothered by the fact that gary and ray are not included in that will um well, and Gar- Gar- uh, gary <laughs> bobby gives a damn about his brothers right jr doesn't but but i mean 
But JR is going to use not going to leave them out. Right. But JR, this is something to get Bobby more on his side. Mm-hmm. So he's, you know. But JR is going to, JR is going to use the Ray and Gary getting cut out to try and garner support from other oh, members right. of the family. Oh, yeah. He's definitely going to. Because that's the way JR rolls. Yeah. Yes. Now, Harv is stuck between a, you know, he's, he's got a, he's going to defend Jock's will, but he's going to do it with a heavy heart. Yeah, because he has to go against Ellie, who's his friend. Right. Uh, so then Sue Ellen fills Jr. in on all the tea from lunch with Pam porn and Pornstash. And uh, yeah, Jr.'s J- eyes like light up. You can see the wheels turning. He's like, ooh, ooh, an opportunity has presented itself. And Sue Ellen's like, what the hell? No, no. That's not how it's going down. And he's like, mm-hmm. yes, how can I destroy a marriage? <laughs> but it could. But it could. <laughs> mm-hmm. Total mustache <laughs> twist. <laughs> oh, totally, totally. It's like Christmas morning for him. He's like, oh, my God, an opportunity to destroy their marriage has come forth? Let's and do Sue it. And Ellen's like, she's like, what the hell? She's like, can you imagine if somebody did that to us? Like, come on. Foreshadowing. And he's like, yeah, and he's like, ah, pfft. You know, you're not you're worried about nothing. And then he's like, basically telling her she's being hysterical. Yeah. Like, and he like he lays down and like pulls his, her head to his chest and is like stroking her hair. And you can see like on her face. She's like, no, yeah. like, this is not right. Like she, this grumble, grumble, you yeah. know, kind of like, why are you like, do not play with my hair right now. Like, I am annoyed with you. Yeah, this is not cool. And he's just like, <laughs> 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 oh, we had a message from a Christo Fufas. Uh, he said, "Nice to find, nice to find similar obsessives." I literally watch Dallas daily. Still, wow. Cool. Well, I hope he's listening to our podcast. This is on Instagram. Yes, we're gonna have awesome. to rope it, rope rope that one in. Uh, okay, so then we cut to Bobby and Pam, who are not getting along. Right, and again, it's that mirror, uh, the yin and the yang of the couple getting along and the couple not getting along. So you bounce from one to the other to contrast. And uh, they're disagreeing mostly about that what the consequences of Ellie's actions will be. Uh, Bobby says that uh, Gary and Ray would get cut out of the will and that she, she really needs to get Ellie to call off this legal suit. And Pam vehemently disagrees. She's uh, starting to bring back some of her Crazy eyes. Those are her, like, angry eyes. Yes. Angry eyes. And I have to say that uh, the transition to the next scene, that's that's a hell of a close-up of that chandelier in the dining room. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Lucy's hair. What is up with Lucy's hair this entire episode, by the way? It is, and like... Puffy off the charts? So like, puffy. It is just... And it's, like, perfectly... Coughed? Smooth. Yeah, it's... It's like up back off her forehead and ginormous. And I the it, lipstick. It's, it's a choice, I got the <laughs> lipstick she's she's got going on this episode. I don't know what's happening. Um, but Lucy is super amused basically about the whole situation and mostly because she knows that it's upsetting JR. So she taunts him. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. and it, and then he, and then it, uh, the barb goes back and forth. You know, well, if it goes back to the old will, then uh, things aren't going to be the same. You're going to get cut out or something. And she goes, well, I'm sure granddaddy provided for me. And then he her- calls her selfish, basically. He's like, oh, that's all you care about is you. Um, you don't even care about your own father, who's totally cut out of the will. Is that JR, the pot calling the kettle black? The oh, call yeah. is coming from inside the house. Repeat. 100%. <laughs> the call is coming from inside the house. Uh-huh. Yep. And that projection and Lucy's much? like, yeah. And Lucy's like, oh, okay. Now right, I've heard like, it. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Now I've heard it all. Okay. Mm-hmm. And he, st- he storms out. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and then Pam and Ellie meet outside of Oliver Brooks or Brooks Oliver's office. Oliver Brooks. <laughs> Oliver the, man Brooks. With, the man with two last names. <laughs> or two first names. I or mean, it could be names. either, right? So I actually literally wrote it, wrote it as Oliver Brooks, but it's Brooks Oliver. Of his Alphabet- office. Alphabetically. B and then O. <laughs> yes. B-O, body odor. <laughs> yes. No, yeah, 
now I'll remember. Um, <laughs> and th- so now she's found out about the old well and uh, all the things about uh, Gary and Ray. Ellie says not to worry about it because she's like, I'll, I'll provide for them. No biggie. But we knew she would. Right. But uh, her concern is that Ray is, he has issues. He, he, he might not accept this. Uh, right. And Pam's like, what? That's, I don't know. And then she's like, you know how he is. And, and, and unfortunately we do, we do know uh-huh. how Ray is. And can we note that uh, Pam is parked next to an effing wagon? I wrote the same thing. <laughs> and in the background is another effing wagon. Well, I didn't see in the background. I saw it next to it. I'm like, is, are they next to the fucking wagon? All right. And there was one in the background. They're really loading up on the uh, wagons here. <laughs> yes. All the wagons. Yes. That's the funny. wagons are circling, as it were. Yes. And then we cut back to Mario's and JR decides to have lunch there out of the blue. Okay. Right. Like he's like he's never had lunch there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, he just shows up. He just got oh, a ha- Mar- Mark Grayson wouldn't happen to be dining here for lunch, would he? And he's like, oh, of course. He's here every day. He's at his table. He just, <laughs> j- just happens to have a hankering for some Italian food, right? Right. Right. And some soft music. <laughs> and some scrolling and some, musicians and some crack of the pepper. Yes. <laughs> and uh, crack of the pepper. You like, Sorry. You like the pepper. <laughs> <laughs> so Jr. lays it on thick. He's like, "Ah, oh, Mark Grayson, uh, you know, wow, like you're just running into our family all over the place." I know, because like my Hello, sister-in-law Pam there. can't stop talking about you. She oh, digs- you snake. She digs your porn stash, baby. Right. He's like, she just, she, and he's like, what, what are you talking about? And he's like, she just, she keeps talking about you like over and over, like at dinner. Like she just, and then she wants to run her fingers to that porn stash. He <laughs> has the goal to tell Mark Grayson, who's essentially a stranger, yeah. that Bobby and Pam are having marriage problems. Right. And, the, and that they've what been the married, fuck? and that they've been married a couple of years, not a couple of years. Not, not like four five. or five years. Not, not right. five years, yeah. I've only been married a couple of years. You know, these things, they don't last. Whatever. And Mark has a good game face because he just is just like, basically like, why are you telling me this? Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, he's listening. He's listening. Say, oh, of course. Say, when this whole Will thing is over, why, why don't we see if we, we haven't done any business together. Why don't we get together and see what we have in common? And Mark says, I think the only thing we have in common is that we're eating in the same restaurant. Right. And that's, Pretty true. And JR is like, oh, well, he likes the women in the fast cars. and the blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he likes all those macho things. So let's go to that stained glass. Let's talk about the stained glass in Cliff's uh, condo. I didn't notice the stained glass. They started on the stained glass and they pulled out as Rebecca and Afton were coming down the stairs. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Rebecca is going on in grandma mode about. Oh, yeah her time with Ellie and little baby Christopher. And, oh, she, she's just, in, in, she's happy to just have that familial connection again. And just right. the and I feel like she's, she, you know, she repaired her friendship with Ellie. She's getting along good with Pam and Cl- like everybody. And she's like, everything's good. Yeah. Again, for And then Cliff comes yeah. in and he's, he's going on about uh, the Wellington land. And, you know, he's, he's reminded that, uh, you're not going after Jr. You you made him. Well, it's not Jr. It's Bobby this time. I got we, we either uncap the well, give him the money, and it's like, how many times can we turn the uh, turn the other cheek there before they're playing spin the top with? Right. Uh, but Rebecca asks him to just kind of lay off for now. She's like, just just lay off, and he's like, but you told me I could run this company any way I want, and she's like, I'm not asking you as the head the head of Wentworth Enterprises. I'm asking you as your mother. And oh, like, oh, dagger! Yeah, dagger. Pulling out the big guns. Okay, South Fork night, but not all the lights are on this time. Right. And Ellie is explaining the situation to Ray about the well. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, you guys. I think this is the part in the episode where I just I I wrote ADHD on my notes because oh, okay. I wasn't. I don't even think I was in the room. <laughs> 
Okay, it's fine. <laughs> so uh, the spaceship took off to the moon at this point. Woo! We're circling right. in their orbit. <laughs> so she's basically like, if this will is overturned, they had Alice Cramden. <laughs> he's, he's like, I'm behind you, and she's like, Yeah, but here's the thing: if it happens, then you aren't willed the money anymore. And Ray is just like, well, I never have had ten million before, and I don't basically like I don't really use it. And it'll be like, you know, I'll never. It's not a big deal. Like I, it's not going to matter to me. And then she's like, well, but I will make sure that you get it. And this is why she's talking to him because she knows that he's going to be like proud about accepting it. Right. Yes. Because yeah. it's what Jock wanted. Once he knew about him. Right. Like, yeah. Right. Yep. And she's like, I will take care of you. Don't even worry about it. Mm-hmm. And I like, I like their relationship. It's cute. And honestly, and sometimes, sometimes I think he was a better son to her than her own blood was. Oh yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, for sure. Cause I mean, I'm thinking about Bobby too, but you know, yeah. no, he, he, he can always, no. And how often do Gary and his mother talk uh, from California? Has she ever gone out there to visit him? Or does this all take place off camera? That they I don't know. Did she ever go visit him on camera on Knott's Landing? No, she was never on a ep- single episode of Knott's Landing. Wow. Kristen yeah, Shepard was on was Knott's weird. Landing. <laughs> because, like, Ellie, her, Gary is her little boy. Like, that's her special little arty boy that she's <laughs> protective of. And she, she, gifted, uh, she gifted him the yeah. house for God's sakes at the at the wedding, and she never went yeah. out to see it. I, I guess not. I don't know. She she never had a chance to interact with Julie Harris. That would have been great scenes together, the theater legends. I also think it's a thing where Gary kind of like took advantage of Ellie too. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> like she was always doing stuff for him, and he would just kind of took. Right, because there's also um, there was a time on Knott's <laughs> Landing when. Gary needed money to clean up uh, this Empire Valley project that he had uh, gotten messed up with. And he flew back to Dallas to ask his family for the money. And it took place off camera. And they turned him down. Ooh. They huh. didn't specify who that. turned him down. but Was that before was, or after Jock died? Oh, it was long after. It was, it was after Jock died. It was around the oh, mid-80s. Wow. Okay. Hmm. Wow. It It was actually, um, Gary was in mourning for something else that we won't talk about at this point. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense why it was turned down. Uh, JR is pulling in, and we're obviously on the soundstage because we don't show the car driving up the driveway. And uh, Ray is coming out of the house. And this is where we we hear about dumb cowboy again. Yeah, but it's JR calls him a dumb cowboy because he knows that's his button. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he's basically like, you're on our side, right? Because if you're not, you're not getting any money. So you should be on our side. I like, give up my money and sell my house mm-hmm. just to just to back Ellie if it meant supporting her. Yeah, that's J- basically Jr.'s argument. Like, support us, or you're just a dumb cowboy, right? Like, and Ray's like, fuck you, <laughs> right? Ray's like, if you really think that, like, you don't actually know your mother at all. And he slams him into the uh, hood of the, the truck there. Of course so he does. We, which you you because drink. there's uh, a threat of being punched. Mm-hmm. Right. The co- confrontational uh, purposes there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But this this uh, provoke uh, n- needling by JR, poking him with a dagger there of dumb cowboy, is still sitting with him the next morning because he's not out uh, with the cattle. Uh, apparently, Charlie is out with the cattle. And I didn't know. Uh, Jenna's daughter was uh, good with cattle at this point. I think she's a little too young. Uh, <laughs> right, she'd be at like t- 11 or 12 at this point. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Again, name recycling. Yeah. Kind of like, kind of like uh, Holly's boyfriend, Jordan, you know, Jordan yeah. Lee, and Faraday. Uh, yeah. So Bray's just sitting there and, uh, and they're kind of talking about the situation. And Donna asks him, like, have you changed your mind because of the situation at all? But he hasn't. No, and I guess I wrote down Ray's dumb pride again. Right, right. And he's just basically like, yeah, I don't think I could. She's like, you know that Ellie would give you the money. He's like, yeah, I don't think I could take it from her. And she's like, that's stupid. Because, like, 
Jock wanted to give me the money. And he's like, right, but Jock wouldn't, he wouldn't be giving it to me. He was giving it to me because he was my father. And then, but that's just getting a handout from someone who's not even my mother. And it's like, Ray, <laughs> Ray, Ray, if she didn't want you to have it, you wouldn't. Right. So like, I'm, be- cause I'm being a dumb cowboy right now with he pride. He's being a dumb cowboy. God. Yeah. He's a, he's a fucking yeah. idiot. Just, Jesus. Yep. yep. He says, a man's got his pride. I'm like, mm, no, that's not a, shut up. Right. Ray, Ray, the last. Shut your face, Ray. Ray, the last time a, a, a quote unquote man had his pride, you didn't go to your wife for help with the, uh, Real the land deal. Oh right, and, and you messed it all up. Yeah, because of my pride. Like, fool me once, shame on you. If fool me, can't get fooled again. Uh. <laughs> oh, the okay. aerobic studio is back. The exercise studio, yay! <laughs> they must have heard my complaint last week. They did, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, oh wait, yeah, Pam still owns this. We forgot <laughs> for like a season, uh, and then enter. Porn stash. Now, I'm sorry. What the hell are you doing showing up at her gym? Place of work. Yeah. Uh, Out of the blue. I want to see her all sweaty in those workout clothes. Oh, yeah, he did. Yes, he did. And then I can use her sweat to oil up my porn stash. (laughs) (laughs) No. Not how any of that works. No. So she's happy to see him, by the way, but she's confused. She's like, what are you doing here? And he's like, I just want to see how everything's going. And she's like, I literally just saw you and updated you. Okay, great. (laughs) Yeah, and he's like, oh, that just seems so much longer ago. She's like, it was literally the day before yesterday. Yeah. Like, oh, well. Well, What are you doing after work, baby? Yeah, what what are you doing after this? And she's like, going home to have dinner with my husband. Well, like I am not interested. Sorry. Right. He's like right. Oh, kicking me out. And she's yep. like, Yeah. So Bye. So, so Grayson has to make a graceful exit. <laughs> but um but he'll be and, seeing her he'll be seeing him again. Oh yeah, maybe. Right. He's basically like, I'll be back. That's right. Mm-hmm. You can't resist <laughs> this. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Need that cream to boil up my porn today. Creams <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> the look of horror that Mary had on her face. Oh my god. <laughs> That's healing oil. Uh, where Punk has come to see Bobby and Jr. Can we insert the uh, the man in black here with Johnny Cash? And just, and I was the, trying to take a picture of it and I didn't get it, but just he's wearing silver, all black, turquoise, with just like tur- bolo. big turquoise bolo tie <laughs> and the belt buckle. turquoise belt buckle. It's just <laughs> Chef's kiss. It the just the is. cowboy so hat good. that he has on. That's funny. <laughs> I want him to like walk a runway or something. He is amazing. Fashion plate. Punk Anderson. It's class over porn stash. Yeah. Like he, Punk Anderson totally listens to Johnny Cash and like George Jones and all that. Sh- oh, like, yeah. That's his. Hank Williams Jr. Yeah. Oh, yes. All of yes. it. All of oh, it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the boots, yep. the big, the black boots. Yeah. No, Punk Anderson is the guy who wants you to think that he shot a man in Rio, Reno just, just to, to watch, watch him, him die. die. One hundred percent. But yeah. he's absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely, not. No. absolutely not. And the clo- <laughs> and the closest else we get to Johnny Cash is in 2012 when Cynthia used his music on the show. Ah, yes, Twice. when the man comes around. Oh, right. I forgot about that. And, and one other song, too. Uh, well, let me look it up on my Dallas soundtrack of music I put together here. Oh. Keep talking. Is that on Spotify? No, it's on my iPod. Oh, 
was gonna say if that's a Spotify playlist, we could share that. Okay, yeah. So, um, so they ask if he's going to testify like on their side, and he really doesn't know. God's gonna like, cut you down. Oh yeah, because he's basically like, I don't care about you boys. I care about your mama and your daddy because I love them both, and I'm stuck between them. So I don't know what to do, and I guess I'll figure it out. All I know is I'm going to be in that courtroom. Right. Which right. everybody is there except Lucy. Yeah, she don't give a shit. Lucy doesn't give a shit. Mm-mm. She doesn't give a shit. She's, she's she so over her family's bullshit. She only, point. Gi- she only gives a crap about needling JR, but. Oh, yeah. I, that's fun. I, th- I love I, when I, she makes faces. She's like, she's, she's the comic sister. relief. She's like Waldorf and Statler, uh, all rolled into one person sitting up in the balcony. Just, but like as the little sister, she's totally pulling a little sister. Where she's like, but I, I thought she would want to be there the if the will was overturned, so she could rub it in Jr.'s face and see the look but on his face. What if she was there and the will was not overturned? It's a, it's a flip of the coin. She just doesn't want to be there. Yeah, she doesn't want to deal with her family's bullshit. She's mm-hmm. she can't. She didn't go to the wedding. Why would she go to this? Right. Well, she She's cares more. Out she again. cares more about her granddaddy than she does about Jr. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Like no question. Yeah, yeah. All the lights are on again at South Fork. It's night. Drink. Yes, drink. Um, Sue Ellen is reading the Romance of the Wind. And someone forgot the horse out in the. Uh, front of the house i saw that just you know, <laughs> yeah which I, i'm pretty sure that's the book uh, lucy was reading like a couple weeks ago was the romance of the wind in the wind maybe they share romance novels right I, and they're both maybe it's, yeah maybe they have a little like book club what a nice little bonding experience yeah no i like that i like that i tried to see if it's a real book but i couldn't find one but my guessing is if that was printed that was really like small printing. Yeah. Or like romance novels from the 80s. I yeah. did see, uh, speaking of books, I was noting the other night, because I actually, I pulled a U and I stopped when I saw this on Knott's Landing. They were referencing the Nancy Drew book, uh, something like The Case of the Missing Map or something like that. Mm-hmm. And so I actually looked it up and it was a real book from the 1940s. So oh, I was yeah. like, ooh, nice. I used nice. to read those Nancy Drew books when I was a kid. I, I was Babysitter's Club. I had Babysitter's Club too, but my mom had read ooh, the Nancy Drew books. Huh? Oh, oh yeah. And Mine. And the Boxcar Children? Uh, and Christopher Pike. Did you ever read Mine. He was no. like Goosebumps. Oh, no kidding. No. And V.C. Anders. Mine went <sighs> out of print. Attic. Mine went out of print, but it was a cult classic, and it came back in was The Pumpkin Smasher. I don't know if you remember that book. No, I've never mm-hmm. seen that book it's, before. It's about a... <laughs> Look at that, Jacqueline. <laughs> I love little it. Little kids. That, that was a picture book when you were little? It, uh, it was a lot bigger. If you Google it, you'll, you'll see. But the, uh, the artwork, yeah. and it was about a serial yeah. pumpkin smasher that goes around the town smashing pumpkins. And they decide to set a trap to catch the person and um please tell me this is how smashing pumpkins got its name they 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 painted (laughs) a giant they painted they painted a giant rock to look like a pumpkin and it turned out to be a witch that was going around smashing pumpkins so she had to go to another town yes (laughs) and there is a subtle find the woman of course if you can look closely here that man looks like stephen king Right it there. does. Yeah. yeah. It's a subtle nod to Stephen King back in the 1970s. Stephen nice. King absolutely does not make shit up, by the way. <laughs> but I, I reached that, that meme came up in my, in my memories on Facebook and I shared it what? the other day just because Maine. <laughs> oh, yeah. gotcha. But are, have we made it to the courtroom yet? So, uh, we're getting uh, there. We're getting there. Pam okay. had a long day and is ready for the hot tub. Right. And they have a hot tub? This is the first time I've ever heard of a Where hot tub. Where the hell is the hot tub? Yeah, I know Lucy was in the hot tub years later because she's in the opening credits in the hot tub. Oh, that's true. But yeah, where there, was the hot tub there? 
Uh, in, in, in those years, where was it? Did it? Was it off the gym? It must have been down in the exercise room that we haven't found yet. Off the corner, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That, yeah, because first time we've heard of the hot tub. James Brown, celebrity hot tub. Uh, and so Sue Ellen's all like... So you've got a million phone calls today from a Mr. Pornstash. Um, he's been calling he want, a lot. He's talking about you wanting to comb his pornstash. <laughs> and with Pam's your like, tongue. that's really weird. Why would he call here? Like, I I just saw him. And she's like, you just saw him? And she's like, yeah. And he so bar- he barged into the exercise studio, which we may never see again in this series because we're going to forget about it soon. <laughs> right. And so, so well, uh, she's a little concerned, mostly, I think, by Pam's reaction to this. And she's like, so it's none of my beeswax. But and she's like, right, it is none of your beeswax. But I will tell you that uh, my marriage is rock solid. And it's like, oh, girl, thou dost protest too much, I think. I mean, if you have to tell somebody that you're happy or, or if you have to te- if you have if you're a lion and you have to tell other people you're a lion, you're not. Well, no, that's not how I wanted it to come out. <laughs> if you have to tell people you're a lion, you are not a lion. Right. You're a tiger. And you're a tiger. <laughs> 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 or a cheetah. Well, that, and- yeah, you are a big fat cheetah. <laughs> Like, it, are you in? <laughs> <laughs> but no, like I, I don't know. Just no. So Pam oh. just immediately gets angry, and she's like, "I don't know why he's doing this. I don't know what his problem. It's his he's problem, not mine." Me. Look, I'm, I'm just, I'm like, why are you like, so coy about it? Yeah, look, she's like, look. she had to be like, "This guy is really into me. I'm not into it. I don't know what to do." But she doesn't. She just gets mad, like, and then someone's like. It. Swellen so this looks at her. She's like, why you are you so angry? Much. You doth yeah, protest too much. Just, right. And uh, well, if you are my like, friends and act like it. Right. You're anyway. making me angry. And it's like, no, girl, again, the call is coming from inside the house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, you know, I am your friend. Pam's like, then act like it. And she was like, kill, 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 kill. And this is when Swellen's like, uh oh. Kill, 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 kill. Yeah. Kill, kill, kill. Meanwhile, uh, upstairs, yeah, Ellie's bedroom, her boudoir. Yeah, Lucy has come to see Ellie with the puffy hair and the lipstick because she's worried about her dad's inheritance. It's the one thing she's really kind of caring about. And maybe this is why she doesn't feel the need to be in the courtroom when she gets reassured that her daddy will be taken care of and that everything will be fine. She knows that she's taken care of either way because she knows that she was like Jock's favorite. Yeah. So she's but fine. Is it gonna, but is it going to fall on her to take care of Gary? Right. Uh, but does she Ellie, think it will? Ellie reassures her that she will always take care of Gary. Like he's been my son for a long longer, time. I will always longer than him. you've been my granddaughter. Longer than he's right. been your father. Uh, right. He'll be fine. Uh, what is not fine is this very awkward dinner they're having. Oh my god, the worst dinner. Uh, um, so uh, it's really I mean, awkward, and there's lots of tension. But Ellie tries to cut the tension by being like, "So tension." And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe and maybe Lucy can give him manners and civility, a lessons in civility. <laughs> yeah, and then ding dong. Mm-hmm. But there's, I, there's I'm a, surprised no one in that room is wearing winter clothing because it is cold as ice in that room. I mean, Mickey thought Lucy was a, uh, a deep freeze machine there, but uh, there's she's got that's got nothing on the icy cold reception going on in this this dinner. And the tension is broken by the doorbell ringing. Yep, and it's. Oliver Brooks. <laughs> Brooks Oliver. <laughs> Brooks Oliver. And JR's like, oh, for God's sake, don't people don't know what time, you know, people eat around here? Right, right, right. That's enough out of you, JR. Yeah. And it's like, obviously, if he's coming to the house during dinner, there's an issue. There's something going on. Right, right. Yeah. And he's, yeah. Not, there, he's not there so they can look at his weird eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Ellie's just like, oh, hey, do you know my 
family let me introduce you to them if and not like yeah fuck you very much yeah <laughs> whatever <laughs> so Lu- lucy gives a little uh her little flirty smile uh she, she does sees- and sue ellen kind of is trying to be polite and jr just ignores him and bobby's like glaring daggers into him and i when lucy gave that little her little almost flirty look it's like oh yeah older man again uh older, an older man, man. She yeah, loves him. As, mm-hmm. Yeah, as we learned last time, Mickey was too young for her. Oh yeah. So may, she, may, maybe Oliver Brooks Brooks Oliver. Uh, she likes more. him mature. I mean, yeah, yeah. But she, oh, but she has to check out their uh, their beamskin rug first to make sure that it meets her. She does seem to like a hairy chest. So why is Brooks here? Brooks is here because he needs to talk to Ellie. So he's like, hey, can we talk in the other room? And uh, then he tells her that, you know, they got an earlier court date than he expected. And it's next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. (laughs) (laughs) Boom. 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 And cut to commercial. And cut to next Tuesday in the courtroom uh, where we have Judge Howard Manti. Where the entire rest of the episode is taking place. Yes. In the courtroom. Uh, Dave Culver is called to the stand. And uh, we see the the list of witnesses for the the plaintiffs, which is Dave Culver, Pamela Ewing, Harlan Danvers, Eleanor Ewing, and Franklin Horner. But we only actually hear right now Dave and Franklin talking. A punk Anderson should have been on that because he was testifying. But he's and testifying for the defense. And oh, was that it, was. I thought that Horner? was a combined list. Okay. Is it Franklin Horner on the stand? Yes. That. Um, who's it? Brooks Oliver is asking about Jock's memory and his mental state. And, you know, does he seem of sound mind for a man of his age? And he's like, what do you mean? Are you calling him senile? And, and he was like, well, no, not really. And then here comes Harv with his faux outrage. Objection, your honor. The witness is a banker, not a psychiatrist. <laughs> with just a touch of, yeah, just a little tiny bit of, it's like Texas. It's like Texas Brit twang. I mean, that's what it's honestly sounded like to me. Right. <laughs> Texas trying to sound fancy. Your yeah. southern, your southern hospitality a down like in Charleston, Georgia. Charleston, maybe, maybe like, yes, yes. Like Blanche Devereaux's father, <laughs> exactly. Savannah, who was played by David Wayne of all people. Somewhere between Charleston and Savannah, I imagine. With that white, uh, the 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 matching no, white suit and the. Blanche wasn't from Savannah, was she? Wasn't she from Atlanta? I need to find out. I, just I think knew she might have lived in Atlanta, but I think she might have originally been from Savannah. I, but don't quote me I, on that. Google. I just remember. I just remember Georgia. That's all. That, that Georgia. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm right either way because it's in Georgia. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay. So the plaintiff they uh, <laughs> wait. To call Ellie until after the defense has gone, and everyone agrees to that for some reason. I I wrote down just a quick bullet points of everything. Uh, um, Brooks Oliver opened with, they're going to call into question his uh, competency. Harv said they're going to try to prove he was of sound mind. Uh, Dave Culver said, this was interesting. Dave Culver said that Jock was anxious to go to South America because it was like his last hurrah, which I, I found interesting. Yeah. Then you had Franklin Horner with the and then it was ways to call Ellie. Okay. Okay. So then we cut to, well, we get to the witnesses for the defense and we see that list. That list is Pat Powers. Pat Powers. Pat okay. Powers. I, I'm Sarah right now. Pat Powers. Yeah. Pat Powers. <laughs> Harold Jackson, who I don't know who that is. Do you guys know who Harold Jackson is? Is that someone we know? Uh... <laughs> I don't remember who that is. That Bobby was the, Ewing. that was the guy walking behind Ellie and Rebecca at the. Uh, right, no. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby Ewing, Sue Ellen Ewing, uh, Punk Anderson, and Jr. So obviously we cut to just the essentials because we don't need to rehash right. everybody's opinions right. of. Especially, I wanted to hear Harold Jackson's testimony. I just, I, I, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and Pat Powers. Pat Powers. And so Punk admits that both he and Jock had fevers that last week. And so they're like, so he might have been delirious. And he's like, no, he wasn't. They're like, yeah, but you also had a fever, so you can't actually say. And he's like, oh, yeah, that's probably a good point. And then when JR is on the stand, they basically 
he says that the codicil was an extension of how he treated his sons their whole lives. Mm -hmm. And it was basically to toughen them up. And I was like, that is such a sad statement. It is. It just. To me anyway, like as a mom, I'm like, that is so sad. That basically your children are being. you Bullied they're there by you. you. Yes. That's really sad. Yeah. They're there, they're there as a, a pawn in your chess game. And, like, life. I know that's an old school way of, like, doing it. That's how they did it. But, like, also, like, this is why we have whole generations of men with emotional issues, you know, <laughs> because they weren't able to, like, express themselves. <sighs> anyway. And then uh, JR says to, to Bobby out in the lobby during the break, well, I see uh, Pam is comforting the opposition. And so I was like, JR, that's your mother. <laughs> no, Jared, <laughs> oh, don't give a fuck. No. Um, and then Ellie gets on the stand, and uh, she reads from Jock's letter, where in the letter he's talking about his fever, and um, then she kind of like breaks down when she has to say that he was mentally incompetent, and she tries. To say that his sense of judgment was not up to his standards, and he says, like, that's, that's not, not what I'm asking, what I'm asking you. you. So then they all go out and wait, and then the judge comes back with his decision. Uh, this bailiff, though, he looks like he's played a, he just has that look like he's played a bailiff in other shows. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. it's a professional. Like, professional bailiff. Professional bailiff, yeah. Um, so the decision is. He rules for the defense. He thinks that uh, Jock did not make a great choice and that he probably wasn't completely weighing all the pros and cons, but he was of sound mind. So the will and codicil stay as is. And he has to live with that. Or no, well, Jock's dead, unfortunately, um, I mean, which, is why which is why they're there. Everybody right, has right, to right. live with his uh, right. situation. And, and Jock has to in whatever afterlife he has. Yes. Down at the bottom of the swamp, unfortunately. Bottom, in the quicksand. Nothing's coming out of that quicksand. You've been down there. No. Nope. So freeze frame on Ellie walking out, and they're like, "Mama, Mama!" And she is just ignoring him. And and scene. Drink twice because it's Ellie. <laughs> so I'm going. I didn't write anything down, but I'm giving this four point four bourbons and. All the eye sex. Oh, yeah. oh. oh, The yes. porn stash eye sex. I'm staying with my four or five from last week, and I have to do a flip flop from last week and give it the return of Pam's exercise studio to book oh, yeah. it last week. Right, yeah. Which may, could it be the last time we see it? We don't know, but it's going to fade be. soon. It's coming soon. That we're never yes. seeing it again. Yes. And Sarah is often, uh, she's going to negotiate a lease for the exercise studio one of these weeks for us. I am going to give it 4.75 bourbons and some Harv Smithfield faux outrage. And I'm surprised nobody gave it oh, the well-dressed punk. <laughs> yep, that would have been a good one. Turquoise belt buckle. Join us next time when we're talking about Season 6, Episode 16 uh, Episode 119 of the series. A Ewing is a Ewing. Until then, bye. Y'all come back now, you hear? I still really fucking hate Sue Ellen's hair. So bad. So bad. <laughs> bad. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Mean you should, right? <laughs> Next on Dallas. Like so many others, I just wouldn't do business with a man. Would you refine JR's oil if I asked you to? I made the biggest mistake of my life when I made a deal with you. Not if you listen and do exactly like I tell you. For how long? As long as I need you. Why don't you ever use your wife or anyone else to get to me again? Or I'll break you in two. If the other night was 25%, I'd tell you. 
I just can't wait to collect the next set of five.